such a privilege to have you here once again. For which time are you going to make give up your studies? Oh, I think it's probably my third time. Yeah, third time. Yeah. Do you see any developments in the conference, or are we maintaining our set excellent level? <laughs> but I think what you notice is that there's probably more and more diversity of participants each time, which is really good. I mean, I think from all over the world who come. But I'm always really impressed with when you talk to arbitration practitioners in Kiev, in Ukraine, including really young practitioners, how, how much they're interested in arbitration, how much they already know about arbitration. I mean, when I started out, in, in, when I went to law school, there was not even a course on arbitration. So I had no idea that I was going to end up doing this for a living. So when I compare that to how much people know here who just out of law school in Ukraine, it's really impressive. But wait, tell us, how did you get into this universe? Uh, well, really quite by accident, which just shows you that you can't really plan a career. Um, so I was, I was serving as a law clerk for a judge in the United States, and I got a letter, which I didn't expect from somebody I really didn't know, who was a judge on the Emanuel's Claims Tribunal in the United States. Oh, yes, it makes claims for you, exactly. And so he, he was said he was serving in The Hague, where, which is where the Emanuel's Claims Tribunal still is. And he said, I'm coming to the United States next month. If you're interested in working as a lawyer at the tribunal, come to New York, I'll interview you. And so I thought, well, that actually sounds very interesting. So I went and I interviewed and I got the job and I went to The Hague. And that was my first exposure to arbitration because the uh, Iran US Claims Tribunal operates under the UNSPRA rules. It is an arbitration tribunal. So, so I stayed there for two years. I learned a lot and I said, Gosh, it would be really interesting if I could do this for a living. And so that's what I've been trying to do ever since. Yeah. But arbitration has changed significantly. Enormously, yeah. yeah. And perhaps the market is a bit overcrowded today. So what would you advise to those young ambitioners, ambition practitioners which are striving for the top? How to excel? Well, it's really hard. I mean, it's true that there I get more resumes every month than there are positions in the field. So I guess you have to be sure that it's something you really want to do. Um, and then I think becoming involved in organizations like all the young arbitration organizations and so forth, becoming active in that way and, and learning you know, about other people in the community, forming contacts, I think this is a good way to do it. A, a lot, even though it's become bigger arbitration, a lot still works on, you know, it's a community and we're somewhat tightly knit and so, you know, knowing people in the community and, and making yourself known to them and how what kind of work you can do is important still, I think. Yeah. So anything else you need to advise to Ukrainian lawyers community? To Ukrainian lawyers community. No, I think keep doing what you're doing. I mean it's really impressive and, and I always enjoy coming back here and it's a very good conference and very substantive. I mean every single one of the presentations today I learned something. So that's really a measure because a lot of times you go to conferences and it's, it's, you don't really feel like you've learned something at the end of the day, so that's good. Thank you so much. It's an honor for us all. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank, Thank you. you.